All right, let's look at section 2-3, uh, set operations and Venn diagrams. Uh, we've been working towards understanding sets uh, along with Venn diagrams. Now we're going to actually do some actual operations. The first operation we're going to do is the intersection of sets. The intersection of set A and B is written as uh, A intersecting B. We have this upside down U, so anytime you see an upside do down U, we're looking at intersection. Uh, is the set of elements common to both A and B. So common to both A and B, uh, meaning A has to have it and B has to have it for it to be in the intersection. Okay, so let's see what that means in terms of an example. So it says find each intersection. This will be set A and this will be set B. If we're talking about intersection, we want to know what's contained in both. So is one contained in both? Well, yeah. So I'll put one in there. Is three? Yep. Is 5? Yep. Is 7? Nope. It's not in B. Is 9? Nope. Not in B. Uh, is 2? Nope. Is 4? Nope. Is 6? Nope. So we end up with the intersection as being 1, 3, 5. Okay? How about the set 2, 4, 6 with the null set? Well, if we're talking about the null set, we know that the null set is empty. There's nothing in it. So what are they going to share? Well, nothing. We know it's going to be the null set. Okay, so again, yeah, 1, 3, 5. Uh, let's look at what this would look like as a Venn diagram. Just as a visual, conceptual idea of intersection, we have our set A, our set B. We have our box, which represents the universal set. The intersection is going to be where they both overlap. This shaded region, the intersection, okay? So if we put our sets in there from the previous problem, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Uh, let me erase this. Uh, the part that, that's the intersection but that we said was 1, 3, 5 uh, would go in this part here. Uh, the rest of it, uh, 7 and 9, would go here, maybe here. And then in set B, we have 2, 4, and 6 still. So they're still in set B, and the overlapping here, uh, 1, 3, 5. That would be the visual representation, or Venn diagram representation of an intersection. Okay? The other operation we're going to talk a lot about is the union of sets. The union of sets A and B, written A union B, this big capital U, uh, is the set of elements belonging to either of the sets. So it could be in set A or it could be in set B uh, to be in the union. Okay. So we've got our same sets A and B. The union here uh, basically means what we're going to do. I need some space here. This is going to be a big set. I'm going to list everything. Uh, one's in it, two is in it, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, and nine. No, eight. Eight isn't in this set or this set, so don't be tricked there. It's kind of tricky. Uh, how about the union of two, four, six, and the empty set? Well, so that was the answer for A. For B, we're just going to have two, four, six, uh, and then the empty set has nothing in it, so that would be the union of two, the set two, four, six, and the null set. All right. A visual representation of the union would be we have set A and set B, and all the region is shaded. Okay, even the intersection. Okay, everything uh, is on the list. Okay, so we have intersection, we have union. Difference of sets A and B, written A minus B, is the set of elements belonging to set A and not to set B. All right. So let's look at what that means. I have the universal set. Let U be A, B, C, D, F, G, H. A, B, A, B, C, E, H. B, B, C, E, G. And C, B, C, A, C, D, G, E. So they give us a lot of stuff here. We just want to find A minus B. All right, so A minus B is going to be the set A, B, C, E, and H, minus the set uh, C, E, G. All we're doing is looking at set A and taking out whatever is contained in set B. So A is not in B, so I'm not going to subtract it. B is not in set B, so I'm not. But C is, so I'm going to take out C because it's right here. E is also in set A, so I'm going to take it out. G is not. We can't take it away, so we don't care about G. And H is not in B, so we don't take it away. So my answer ends up being A, B, H. Okay? A, B, H. Now, let's look at B. We want B minus A union with C complement. So now, holy cow, this is going to be more complicated. This is what 
Uh, this is where it starts getting a little bit tough. Take it step by step. Simplify the left, then simplify the right, and then take the union of both. So let's look at B minus A. Set B is C, E, G. I'm going to subtract that from A, or sorry, I'm going to subtract, uh, sorry, A, B, C, E, H. That would be set A. And what I end up with is I can take away a C because it's right here. I can take it away. I can take away an E because it's right here. But I can't take away G because it's not in set A. So this whole left side is just G. So now I have G union with C complement. Remember, complement means whatever's in the universal set, take away uh, that set C. So I'm going to take away A. I'm going to take away C. I'm going to take away D. I'm going to take away G. And I'm going to take away E, all from the universal set. And what I'm left with is B, F, and H. Okay, so now I'm, I'm taking set G. I'm unioning it with BFH. Remember, union means list everything. So my answer ends up being G, B, F, H. Okay? Uh, B, F, G, H, the order. You put it in alphabetical order, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Okay? Uh, so that's what we want to do. Take it step by step. Start here with the left side, get your simplify that side, get a simple set. Find C complement, get a simple set, and then do the operation between them last. Okay? Step by step, don't try to do everything at once. It gets complicated. Okay? Here's a visual representation of A minus B. Alright, so we get kind of this crescent moon shaped. We get, we're getting rid of the intersection here uh, between A and B, and we're left with kind of that, that uh, cookie with the bite cut out of it. Okay, uh, ordered pairs, this is just kind of a, a small discussion here. It's going to take us into a little bit of cross-multiplying. Uh, in the ordered pair A, B, A is called the first component, and B is called the second component. In general, A, B does not equal B, A. Two ordered pairs are equal provided that their first components are equal to their second comp or, or and their second components are equal. Okay, so uh, three three is equal to three three. All right, but here uh, you know two three is not equal to three two. Uh, that's what this rule says here. Okay, you know what equality means. The Cartesian product of a and b, written as a crossed b, is uh, well. Let me just show you what we do. We're going to take all the elements in a and cross it with all the elements in B uh, and, and list them as an ordered pair. Let me show you what I mean. The first ordered pair is going to be A1. I just took the first uh, element in each set. Then I'm going to list the next one, A2. Then I'm going to list A3. Now I've exhausted all the elements in B crossed with A, so I go to the next element in set A, which is B. And I'm going to end up with B1, B2, and B3, and I'm going to put them all in a bracket because this is a set, uh, and that's my answer. That would be the Cartesian product. We're just listing them all. B crossed with B is going to be 1, 2, 3 crossed with 1, 2, 3, so I end up with the set uh, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, I'm just going down the list here. Now I'm jumping here to 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, and last but not least, 3, 3, and close bracket. Okay, we're just crossing, we're making a list of all the possible crosses here. Okay? Uh, the cardinal number of a Cartesian product, uh, there's a lot of math mumbo jumbo here. It's saying if the cardinality of A is A and the cardinality of B is B, remember cardinality just means if I have a set A, B, C, D, E, the cardinality of that set, let's call this set uh, D, let's say the cardinality of set D is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's how many elements are in the set. Okay? Then we can find the cardinality of A uh, cross with B by just taking the cardinality of each times each other. Okay? we just get a b okay meaning if i have the cardinality of this set is 12 the cardinality of this set is 7 i'm going to take 12 times 7 is 84 okay and what all this rules back here means is that it's associative the order doesn't matter okay 
uh, we get 84. All right. Again, visual representations. Uh, here's the intersection, the union, the difference. Uh, the one I didn't show you that we talked about in 2.2 is the complement. So we have set A uh, in the universal set. Remember, A and A prime, A and A complement uh, add up to the universal set. So the shaded region will be everything outside of A still in the universal set. Okay, let's do some tough examples here. Let's draw a Venn diagram to represent the, the set A prime uh, intersecting B. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw uh, my Venn diagram with A and B. So I have A and I have B and the universal set. Okay. If I want to find A prime, then I have to shade the region that's not A. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of shade here in blue. A complement, okay? Everything that's not uh, A. And then uh, it wants the intersection with B. So I'm going to shade uh, everywhere that B uh, is included, okay? So B is just that circle B. And if it wants the intersection here, it wants where do those two shaded regions meet, okay? That's going to be in this kind of crescent shape here. It's the region that's shaded two times. That would be my shaded region. Uh, A prime intersecting B. Okay, this looks, the, the computer has here has a little bit nicer and neater uh, representation of that, which actually looks like the difference B minus A. Okay, we get that cookie mon or that cookie uh, cutout crescent moon shape. Okay, let's do a little bit more compli complicated one. A prime intersecting B prime intersecting C. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our Venn diagram. This one's going to be a tough one. I might miss this one. So we have our set, a universal set. I have an A, I have a B, and I have a C. Okay, A, B, and C. Okay, so A prime is going to be everything that's not A. So I'm going to go ahead and shade. I'm going to have a lot of shading here, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and try to th stay fairly thin with my lines. So there's my first shading, everything that's not A, and then everything that's not B. Okay, so everything that's not B, I'm going to shade the other direction. Oops, that would include A there. Okay, uh, and then we're going to intersect that with C. So I'm going to go ahead and shade my C region here. And when we're talking about intersection, it wants to know all the spots that it intersects uh, or that it's shaded all three times. So it's only shaded all three times in kind of this cut out of C right here. Uh, and that's what you're going to do in these homework problems, okay? Uh, you're going to start start uh, shading one region, shading the next region, especially on the intersections, okay? Uh, and as you can see there, uh, we got that one right, okay? Uh, let me know if you have any questions on this. Uh, it, can, it can seem a little bit overwhelming. Uh, use my math lab. It's got some good stuff in there. Uh, good luck.